Charity Action for Children has today revealed that families on the breadline would need to work the equivalent of eight working days to escape poverty. Their new data reveals that an average low-income family would need to squeeze an extra 19 hours a week despite already working full-time. Joining us now, Head of Policy and Research at Action for Children, Joe Lane. Joe, good morning. Um, good morning. This, is a, this is a terrible, terrible statistic um, and says nothing. I mean, I, I watched the debacle that happens in the Commons last night. I see what's happening in Gaza on the one hand, and yet I will always say what's going on in this country, how people are suffering, cost of living. We have to do more, don't we? Absolutely, yeah. So what we've shown is that we often hear about that, you know, staggering number of children growing up in poverty, over 4 million children now in the UK. But what we've done today is look really closely at a specific group. So half a million of those children are growing up in households where their parent or parents, all of their, you know, all of the parents in that, in that family are working full time. And what we often hear from politicians is, you know, work is the best route out of poverty. All you need to do is get into work. And for those families hearing that, it, you know, it's a bit of a kick in the teeth. But really, Joe, this is, Joe already... this is an absolute bugbear of mine, has been since I started in the station. Jams, I call them, just about managing. We live in a society where both the man and the woman, in this instance, that's what we're talking about for people, go out to work, they pay their bills, they do absolutely nothing wrong, and they're still damn well struggling. And yet what people don't want to talk about, I don't know, you probably won't either, is we're all right to pay a lot of people a lot to do nothing, some of whom are taking the mickey out of the system. And that's why the jams deserve our help. We need to focus on these people. It annoys the bits off me. People, you know, these people are definitely struggling and Action for Children works with, the, you know, works with hundreds of thousands of families every day ac across the country. And we see that, you know, we see that really stark impact on children if their parents are falling behind on bills, if their parents are skipping meals. And why we've sort of focused on that, that need to work an eight day week. So those parents working full time, if they were going to pull themselves above that poverty line to, you know, to... So they, they were not facing those struggles. They would have to find an extra 19 hours a week to work, um, you know, on their current or on their current wages. So it's not enough just to say go out to work. What we're saying to government and actually to all political parties in, in this general election year is that they need a really credible plan to say, how are we going to help these working families? How are we going to lift, lift them above the poverty line? And the best way to do that for children is to invest in the in the child element of universal credit. So we say, Rock, increase that child element of universal credit by £15 a week. And that's the most direct way you can put money in the pockets of low-income families with children to make sure those children aren't growing up in poverty. You're sort of making the point that um, you're saying it's a myth that work alone is a passport out of poverty. If you could say, like, these are the things we've identified, if we provide this level of support to these families, that's what will pull them out. What would they be? Yeah, absolutely. So we, it's well known now that the vast majority of children growing up in poverty live in households in work. The, the, this research today adds to that evidence, which shows it's not only in work, it's often in full time work and, you know, with every adult working as much as they can. It's really crucial, particularly for those families. It's often because they face higher costs. So, you know, children are a temporary higher cost for, for those families that they'll only face for you know, a relatively short period of time in their working lives. And that's why universal credit actually is really well designed. It's really well placed to help those families, but at the moment isn't paid at the rate needed to lift those families out of poverty. I... Next to that, we would say to all political parties, they also need a wider program of work to say, are we making sure work pays? You know, are we making sure I that get that. if you I, are I a get parent... that. I get that. I absolutely get that. And I think it's a really important point to raise. And 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 again, you know, there are things that can be said on shows like this and people are like, oh, whatever. But it, it, to go back to my point, if I was... And I think it's astonishing that you have created this research on working families, because you're absolutely right. The message should be work, uh, and that's beneficial. This won't be popular, what I'm going to say, but you haven't mentioned you haven't mentioned people on benefit, and you haven't mentioned illegal migrants in this country, and that's why people... We're doing a story later about a Cumbrian town. That's why people are hacked off. That's why those jams, right, are saying, hold on a second, why would we even bother to damn well work? Why would we even do that when we're struggling? We're missing meals just for our kids. I think that's... I think it's absolutely outrageous. I'm, I think it's an excellent piece of research. I think it needs highlighting. I really, really do, don't you? And I think the, the, the really important thing in the, the, the research shows is that for most families claiming benefits, their, their income is a package of work and benefits income. So what yeah. it's definitely, you know, so when we're talking about improving living standards, what you can't do is say it's all about work, it's all about the labour market or it's all about the benefit system. What you have to say, 
So a family with children or a family with caring responsibilities, potentially with a disabled adult, with a disabled child. So one of the, the people we spoke to for this research, you know, they were a two income household. Their child was born um, with a disability. The, the mum went part time and that suddenly put them in a position where they were facing financial difficulties. It's not enough to say, you know, work needs to pay. What we need is in that, you know, we need a, a labour market and jobs that pay and offer flexibility for those people in that in that situation, particularly where they face those changing changes in circumstances. But we also need a social security system that makes sure it, it supports people often in those very temporary or, or f phases of life, whether they've lost a job, whether they're facing ill health, whether they've got young children that says, just because you're going through that at the moment, that doesn't mean you need to live Joe, we you know, got in to, poverty. Uh, Joe, fascinating. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed.